What's happening everybody? Sorry for the delay today. Had some stuff that needed to get taken care of before we started and I couldn't get out of it. So we're ready to rock and roll now though. So hopefully you guys are excited to get rolling with this. So I thought today, um, <clears throat> based on the results that I got from <clears throat> our experiments last week, excuse me, with Amazing ClearCast, I wanted to try dyes with Amazing ClearCast because to be honest, we got really good results with these things. They're, they're looking pretty awesome, actually, both sets. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, but that's kind of why I wanted to do this again. I also have some resin that I need to use up, so it kind of made sense. But I'm very curious to see how, how, do, how does the swirling with Amazing ClearCast compare if you're using dyes versus micas, because sometimes it can be you know pretty different. So that's what we're gonna do today. It'll be kind of similar to what we did last week. Um, we're gonna do a couple batches. I'm a little bit bummed my heater or my oven is kind of full <clears throat> with, with molds that need to be cast after the show or after this uh, live stream. So I'm not gonna be able to heat up the molds fully, but I am sticking them on the, the, the oven. Um, so they should be okay, but we'll probably get quite a bit of corner creep on these ones. But anyway, I hope you guys are all doing good today. It is Wednesday halfway through the week so let's see who got here first i know i'm a little bit late today I apologize but <clears throat> my mouse is not working here we go who got here first mike McEwen was here first way to go followed by connie um so uh, a couple little announcements real quick one the socal turners expo has actually been postponed um so it is now july 2nd and 3rd uh so if you guys already bought tickets, which I did, um, it's not a big deal. They're going to be still valid, um, but you will, if you did get a hotel at the Marriott, you're going to need to let them know so you can switch those. So you should be good to go. The only tough thing is if you bought plane tickets, you're going to have to mess with that. So that kind of sucks, but um, luckily I didn't do that. I was going to drive. So here's a link to their website. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's like a big turning kind of, kind of like the symposiums, a little bit... Um, a little bit less um, formal than like the, the AAW symposiums like SWAT or something like that. It's going to be a little smaller most likely. Uh, but it is actually being sponsored by Rockler now, um, which is kind of cool. They got a pretty big sponsor. So it should be kind of fun. Middle of, of summer down in Anaheim. Um, you can, you know, head over to Disneyland after you're done. Uh, so it, it'll be pretty fun. I'm a little bummed that it's, it's being pushed back, but I was really looking forward to it. It was supposed to be the end of February. My mouse is not working today. <clears throat> so... Let me do something here. Sometimes my mouse pad gets a little dusty and it just doesn't want to work. Let's see if that fixed it. That's working better. There we go. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. There we go. Now we got it. Get the bot. What's the bot? Uh, yeah. Is are people are people messing around again? What? Uh, let me let me view this. Mess. I don't know what that meant. Anyway, sorry guys. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like talking to myself here. So uh, we got this, the Turner's Expo is postponed. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is this Saturday at 4 p.m. I'm going to be doing the virtual craft festival and we're going to be doing uh, flower blanks. Um, so casting dried flowers in resin. I'm looking forward to it. We did that on the, the Patreon stream once, <clears throat> not too long ago. Um, and I'm, I'm going to get some examples for you guys to kind of take a peek at. I'm very excited about this. I was really racking my brains on what to, what exactly I wanted to do, you know. Um, and I came up with this. I thought this would be kind of fun. I, I've been kind of meaning to, uh, to do some more of these. Let me, let me just grab a couple examples here. If I can get these without dropping everything on the ground. Oh, for goodness sakes. There we go. Uh, here we go. Okay. Got a couple examples to show you guys of what we're going to be doing. <clears throat> so let me switch to the overhead camera here. So again, it'll be Saturday. And, and if you aren't familiar with the, the virtual craft festival, it's like a 24 hour, pretty much like all day long, um, live stream with different YouTube channels. So different makers, different types of things that they're doing. Um, so, you know, you might have somebody that's doing like clay sculpting or something like that. And then like welding and, you know, uh, resin casting, turning, woodworking, whatever it may be. There's all kinds of different people doing stuff. I don't know what the lineup is this, this uh, month. Uh, I'm waiting to get the, the schedule from Jamie, but, 
Uh, it is awesome. It's, it's a really fun event. And so I'm going at 4 p.m. Pacific time, and then I'll be followed. Carl Jacobson is like wrapping everything up. So really, really looking forward to it. And it's been a, a while since I did one. <clears throat> so let's get this amazing clear cast out of the way. So we're going to be playing with some flowers. Um, and I got a few different types of things. These guys are rose petals that we're going to cast. These things look kind of fun. Look at that. What? <laughs> These little flower bud button things. Um, and then we got some kind of bigger ones. Um, but I've already done a, a few examples. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. So you can just cast this in, in clear. Um, these work really, really good for if you're making like the pen blank size. These are great for um, diamond painting pens, for sure. Uh, you can totally make pens out of them as well, just regular pens. But uh, the big thing is you got to, you know, uh, paint the, the resin on the inside of the, the blank. And then this is rose petals. So you can make, and this is actually, I thought this was a, a pretty cool idea because um, Valentine's Day is coming up and that would be a pretty good, um, you know, project kind of thing for uh, Valentine's Day, I thought. It'd be kind of cool. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing on the Virtual Craft Festival coming up. Looking so much forward to that. Um, so uh, keep, an eye, keep your eyes peeled. I'll, I'll be posting the schedule and all that good stuff along with everybody else. So Carl, you know, keep an eye on Carl's channel, Jamie Page. I think Jake's doing it this, this month again. Um, so we're all, we'll all let you know what's happening. That's totally the wrong view. There we go. Now, I have something that I want to share with you guys. Somebody sent something in that blew my freaking mind. And I haven't even actually taken it out of the like packaging yet. So Brian McMillan was like, hey, you changed your business name and I want to kind of send you something. I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, didn't know what it was going to be. Look at this. Are you kidding? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, he totally CNC'd it and painted it. And on top of that, he even um, inlaid some, some magnets. Let's, let's see if this works. I'm going to be very careful with this. Uh, it kind of slides on this. He, he kind of, he put the magnets on to see if I could put it on my cabinet. Um, what I think I want to do, though, I mean, I think this needs to go, like, right there. What do you guys think? It's kind of hard to see. Wherever I want it, I want to put this up. So big thank you to Brian for sending this in. This is just, that is just awesome. <laughs> so cool. I love it. So big thank you. So we'll figure out where to get this thing so that I'm actually going to, let me just put it right there for right now. Yeah, you can see it. I, I think if we hang it up, up here, maybe. Where do I usually stand? I'm just trying to figure out where you can see it. I might do maybe like another magnet. I'm just looking at my screen and maybe try to get it up on here or I don't know if this side thing will work or not. So either way, I'm going to play around with that. Thank you, Brian, so much for sending that in. It is so cool. Maybe down a little bit. Yeah, you can see it right kind of behind me. Maybe if I, I'm going to do this for now. Got all these stupid color samples. Put it there, I think you can see it, and I'll try and stay out of the way. Yeah, uh, my head's still kind of in the way. Anyway, pretty awesome, Brian, thank you so much. That is, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I never even really, the funny thing is he's like, I, he, he sent a card and he's like, you know, you need a sign, like everybody's kind of got a sign and all that, and I, I was like, it didn't even cross my mind to like put a sign up in my shop <laughs> ever for like Envy Woodworks or anything. So anyway, okay, so <laughs> that is just amazing. I wanted to share that. But let's uh, switch to this view because I want to share the results from last week. Okay, so we did two different things with amazing ClearCast. And part of the thing was, and it was just the regular, you know, like amazing ClearCast, not the plus version. Um, but I had this. For anybody that wasn't watching last week, I had these, this like, you know, two-gallon kit of resin. And it's like, I want to say it's got to be at least a year and a half old. <laughs> it's pretty old. Pretty, it's over a year, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I, I was like, okay, so let's see. We did an experiment to see if it would, um, and I did this before the show, just to make sure it would harden and everything was good. It looked fine. Looked like it was still good to use. And so the experiment that we did was we did, we mixed up a big bucket of it. And then, um, let's see, where did I put that bucket? Sorry, I was looking for the bucket that I used. 
we mis mixed up a pretty big bucket of it and then we did one experiment just pouring that resin right away and then one of them we waited until you know it, it was kind of near the work the end of the working time and here's the results so i'm these are the ones that we did waiting for kind of the you know the end of the working time and you can see there's a pretty good amount of color separation in these you really see the blues you really see the greens um, and they look pretty good right so these were the ones that we waited till i want to say it was about 125 degrees fahrenheit before we started pouring them these are the ones that we poured right away and i mean i gotta be honest so there's a little bit more color bleed i would say right uh, it's just not super defined but man i gotta be honest these actually look better to me to my eye a little bit they are i mean just really amazing so that just kind of goes to show you know you can get pretty decent results even if you pour right away with amazing clear cast now again the temperature in my shop is 68 degrees fahrenheit that would play into this i don't think you would get the same exact results if it was like 85 or 90 degrees in my shop right so you know different things uh, this isn't like a for you know a definitive in every case kind of test thing but man really happy with the results of both of these now that compares to where did i even put these things <laughs> what did i do with them oh huh. uh what did i do with, so we also poured some with um the deep pour what the heck did i do with those oh huh. oh here they are i found them we also did, and so the same colors, except we also added some yellow. We were kind of going for like a Caribbean vibe. And as expected, one single color. <laughs> no swirls. Uh, in which I expected this. And so this is the example. I, I'm actually really surprised by this example. Um, I really expected these to ble like bleed quite a bit more. But um, I think that the reason that it didn't bleed as much is because this specific resin is pretty thick. Like, you know, like sitting on the counter. I mean, it's kind of thick as molasses type stuff. Whereas deep pour, on the other hand, this is a very thin resin. It's comparable to like liquid diamonds or a Lumilite clear slow. And the thing is, it's also got a two hour working time. So all of the mica is just all kind of, you know, mixed together, um, resulting in these just kind of green blanks kind of boring whoop de doo but they turned out you know whatever if you need green blanks i got a couple like a like like grass green so let me stop real quick and oh magnets on the inside good call steve good call ah the blanks arrived good michael i'm excited about that too all right let me switch to this overhead view i'm gonna i'm just gonna look and see what uh what everybody says here Anybody's um, has any questions about this? I don't think so. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> like I said, I, I, I got to be honest. I was really actually blown away by how good um, these, these turned out. Now, I kind of poured them slightly differently as well. Um, I, I would say the first batch that I did, I was kind of pouring a little bit thinner uh you know lots more passes whereas the ones that were um kind of wait you know that i waited till the end i think i poured a little bit larger blobs kind of i don't know um but you know that can also affect the results that you get you know color swirl blanks are not the easiest thing to just say oh here's how you do it and it's gonna work perfectly every time every year they're the same every time consistency with these things can be pretty difficult it's tough for me still and i've been doing this for eight years so if anybody out there is trying to get color swirls and everything's not you know you're not getting you know super consistent results it is kind of how this stuff works and eventually you'll kind of get the muscle memory to kind of keep you know doing stuff over and over and getting kind of repeated results but it can be tough with you know temperatures changing in your shop or if you're using different resins or any of that kind of stuff just understand that it can be a little bit more difficult um, than you know just mixing up resin dumping in like one color or something you know type thing so anyway um so today we're gonna we're gonna go for dyes i want to see how this stuff stays separate or if it does or not um in my 
experience, dyes typically will bleed more than mica powders or it's more obvious um, when they do, you know, bare minimum. That's, you know, the mica is kind of, I feel like you can maybe get away with a little bit more with the mica powders and, and color bleed. It's like, okay, so you have this kind of gradient look and it's pearly and sparkly and it, and, and it just doesn't look that bad. But in some cases, certain colored dyes just look horrible. Um, you know, a big one is blue and yellow. If you get color bleed, you're going to get green, which you know, if you're going for blue and yellow, you don't want green in there. Like, let's say that you were trying to make a Michigan Wolverines blank. Their colors are dark blue and, and yellow. Um, you don't want green in it because the Spartans, Michigan Spartans, are their, like, rival, right? So dyes can be tough, especially if you're, if you're going for very specific colors and, and need to get these things to stay separated. They are just, uh, just uh, bare minimum. It's more obvious, but I would say that they tend to it tends to bleed more, like I said. So let's do that. Uh, if anybody wants to super chat, you can pick some colors. What I'm gonna do is we're just gonna mix up a big bucket. Again, we're gonna do the same exact experiment. I thought that was a really awesome way to kinda, you know, see what's going on with um, what's the difference between, you know, mixing right away and what's the difference between, you know, waiting till kind of the end of the working time. It's a, it gives you a good experiment what we're going to do is use the same colors again. I think that that's kind of important for the, for these experiments, just to kind of see, you know, what, what, what are the differences. Uh, but I'm very excited to see how these things turn out, honestly. Is the resin drought? Yeah, so I don't, one thing I want to mention about the, the resin, you know, like the, the long shipping times or waiting times, it's going to kind of go in waves because what ends up happening is if they can't get raw materials, or, you know, if that's delayed for a little bit, or, you know, like they even had a problem getting cardboard boxes to, to ship the stuff. Um, you know, if a certain thing doesn't come um, and they need that ingredient or material or whatever to, to get stuff going, then I think that you're going to run into longer times. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to be like this constant shortage type thing. Um, they got resin now. I, I already got my order um, as well. But I do recommend, you know, if you need resin, if you're starting, like, let's say that you wait, you know, you're looking at the jug. Let's say you wait until it's like down to here and you're like, oh, I need to order some more. You might want to, you know, order up here closer and just get that stuff in before you run out. Just to make sure, just give them a little extra time because you just don't know. You know, I, can't, I don't think anybody knows even alumilite i don't think they can say oh well you need to order three days in advance now or something like that or whatever so i think it's you should be good just you know be be a little bit careful and i i kind of got myself stuck because um the problem with with what i was doing was i had switched my business account and i also needed a new credit card i, I got a new credit card and i was waiting for that card <laughs> to, to make a purchase and so i kind of i would have purchased like a week earlier probably at least uh, and, uh, and I kind of got caught up and then I got stuck in this thing where they didn't have resin. So, Anne is in for some turquoise. Uh, do you want, um, this aqua conch? That's a pretty good turquoise. There's also like the, the lighter blue. I, I think that, uh, the teal blue, teal blue or aqua conch? This one's definitely more blue. They're both kind of, both kind of in that, that realm there. Um, so I think you should be okay, though. After I demold pen blanks, Richard's asking, what do I do to them? Um, I just cut them on the table saw. Uh, I, well, I will typically let my blanks, you don't necessarily, well, I recommend waiting overnight before you start really cutting them. Um, they're, a lot of times they're going to be pretty soft, and it depends on the resin and all kinds of different stuff. Um, in this case, Amazing Clear Cast, um, we cast them at, you know, in the afternoon, and then I came back the next day and then cut them, and they were fine. They were hard. Um, some resins are going to be soft, you know, and I, I don't recommend cutting it when it's like if it's like really soft. You know, let it harden up where you can't really dent it with a fingernail, then cut it. Um, and you can turn it as well, you know, whenever. 
But the thing is, you're not going to get a, a really good polish until it's fully cured, where it's reached its full hardness. So, you know, I usually recommend, So, and, and every resin is going to be kind of different with their full cure schedule. Um, Alumilite clears five days, clear and clear slow. Um, deep pour, and most of your epoxies kind of run like five to seven days for a full cure. So I usually recommend if you're if you're going to be polishing up the actual, you know, uh, just the resin part, you're better off waiting. You're going to get a better um, shine on it. Uh, but anyway, and then after that, I just cut them on the table saw. That's that's what I do. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think deep pour is really the greatest way to go for pen blanks, um, like color swirl stuff, or if you're trying to suspend things, I don't think that's the one to go with. Um, Amazing Clearcast works okay; it's really thick, um, but it is a little bit cheaper. I would say that Alumilite Clear and Clear Slow turn better. Um, Amazing Clearcast is just like a, it's not technically, if you look up the specifications, it's not technically harder. I don't know what the specification is exactly, but it, it just, it feels harder. It's like a little bit more brittle, I guess, or something. Just, it's, it's just kind of harder on the tools than Alumilite Clear. That stuff turns really great. Um, not bad. I mean, there's much worse things to turn out there, but it turns like, like a bar top epoxy. Like it's, it's very similar to a lot of the other ones where it's just, just not as nice. Uh, but it, it turns fine. Um, Amazing Clearcast is good. Um, if you have a pressure pot though, and you're trying to do color swirls and don't want to wait around for 30 minutes, I recommend um, you know get a pressure pot and use Alumilite Clear Slow. I think that's the way to go. 12 minute working time, you can get anything you want done, and it works pretty well for for color swirl stuff. And it also works really well for suspending objects and things. Not a bad way to go. You can use anything though. I mean, frankly, that you know, I just that's kind of what I prefer personally. All right, so let me scroll down. We got, let's see, we got Stefan and we got Ann. Powder blue. We got powder blue somewhere. Ooh, there it is. Powder blue. So let's see, did we get, did Ann say which? Aqua, okay, Aqua Conk. Um, and let's go for, let's go for one more color like one or two so i'm gonna wait around see if anybody else wants to super chat if not we'll pick one and see what happens see what we get so i want to kind of i don't really want to use the alumilite the clear you know like they're transparent dyes um i think that these are gonna the divine pigments are a better way to go you can you can make opaque pigments by adding white to to alumilite dyes but I got the entire set pretty much of divine pigments and you don't have to add stuff to it. So they're just much easier. Now we can also add some fluorescence. That's kind of a semi opaque kind of thing. All right, so let's see, roll. Wait, what did Levi say? Oh, okay. Oh, are you asking, like, what do I actually do with the blanks? I just, I arrange them. We're going to make a really gigantic domino effect thing with my pen blanks that I make on the show. <laughs> just kidding. We're not doing that. That would be pretty cool, though. I would have to be totally guaranteed that that video got a million views, though. Just, and I don't think it would. Who do we got? Connie's in with some purple. Okay, so we got a couple purples actually. We got Sangria purple. We'll get that out. And they just came out with Lilac purple as well. Which is very exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the overhead so you can look at these two. This is gonna be our color combo for our both of these, these things. So we got kind of lighter is the lilac and then Sangria is a little bit darker. You can actually see it on the outside there a little bit. Two pretty good colors. What is this? Oh. oh man, Lily is in. 
with some red. We got two colors of red too. Okay, so this is gonna be the last one. We gotta put the kibosh a little bit on, on the colors. We got berry red and brick red, and this is not really gonna be exactly telling, I don't think, on the camera. Um, but the berry red is a little bit more like, I don't know, brick red is a little bit more like what you'd think like bricks, that kind of red. Whereas berry is a little bit uh, <laughs> raspberry colored. I, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Lighter kind of. So we got a couple of choices there. Connie looks like lilac. Okay, ooh, that's gonna be nice. We're going for some Easter colors today. Sangria back. These are gonna be pretty cool, I think. I'm very excited to try this. So for anybody that doesn't know, I, I, I really stick to, if I'm making color swirl blanks, I pull out a, a Lumalite Clear Slow. That's just, that's my favorite resin. I have tons of experience with it. And especially for, this, for the live streams, it just works out better because we can get stuff made in the pot and it's like, you know, 15 minutes of time. Whereas, you know, this stuff, you know, this, this is okay the way we're doing it because I'm mixing it up. We're pouring one right away, but I mean, we got to just kind of sit, sit and wait for, for 30 minutes. Now, I'm sure I can talk. All you guys know, <laughs> I could probably talk for 30 minutes, no problem. But I just personally, Illumilite Clear Slow is my way to go. So I don't have a lot of experience. I just, I literally, for color swirls, I don't, I wouldn't pull this out usually. All right, I haven't, you know. Uh, but I have a lot of it, and so we need to use it up. I thought, let's do some experiments. And one of the other drawbacks that are things, things that I haven't really liked is I don't, I never knew what, I don't know what the temperature was for this stuff, you know, if you were going to wait. So it looks like somewhere between like 120 and 130 Fahrenheit. That see, I mean, obviously that seemed to work uh, with just amazing clear cast. But I got all that other stuff down when it comes to um, Illumilite clear, you know? So, all right, so let's, uh, what did we do here? Did we use this bucket? Yeah, we did. One, 48 ounces, okay. Gene? What happened to Lelia? Lelia wanted red. Very red, okay. <clears throat> oh, Frank's in there too. Where, am I missing stuff? What's going on here? Did, was Gene one of the... Did Gene super chat? I don't see that. It didn't show up in my thing. Frank, let's see here. Oh, Gene, oh, I, okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I got it. Bubblegum pink for Frank. Okay. I'm okay. I'm on top of things now, I think. Where's the bubblegum pink? Oh, hold on. I need to get a new one of those. Okay. All right, so we got five colors. It's going to be crazy, guys. Did I write down anything on the... Thousand. How many? Yeah, I think we. I think. I think we can do. I'm gonna add a little bit more on on this one. I think. Twenty-eight. Of course, they don't have a line for that. One point. I seriously need to learn how to use these lines. Okay, so we're just gonna do... Yeah, we're gonna do that same thing, 24 and 48. I think that's what we did. All right, so this is, uh, a, you're gonna mix this by volume. So you need to get a, a, some sort of a container cup that has graduated lines on it. 
and it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume. So make sure you're not doing it by weight. This is not a weight uh, resin. It, it, would, it would actually not work out. The, the numbers wouldn't work. So, um, but Alumilite Clear Slow, so the one that I typically use, that one is a, a weight measurement. So just, just to kind of, I know it gets confusing, but worst case scenario, just when you get your, your stuff, just read the, the, the jug somewhere. Right there, it says mix ratio, one to one by volume. That means you're going to do it in a bucket. Okay. So I'm just going to put equal parts. We're going to put 24 ounces and then 24 more to, to hit 48 on the side of this bucket. So again, this stuff is really thick. Um, I, that's one of the things that I don't, I really don't actually like about it. But I mean, you can see this is like, you know, <laughs> not like Alumilite clear, let's say. Um, but this stuff was really kind of intended, you know, is developed as a bar top epoxy. And so... In that sense, Amazing Clearcast is like every other bar top epoxy. Most of them are thick like this. So there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, that's just kind of how those things are typically made. Quote unquote casting resins, what, what, what a lot of people will call a casting resin. A lot of times those are going to be thinner viscosities. Um, that way they can kind of flow into and around things a little bit easier. Sneaking up on that 24 ounce mark. I think this ought to do it here. It's pretty fun. So the way that I kind of figured out how much to mix here was each one of the molds that we're using takes about 550 grams or so of resin. I just know the weights because I'm used to using Alumilite Clear. And so I just know, you know, typically think of things in weight, but you can also just quickly convert that to milliliters. Um, it's a pretty much a one-to-one -one conversion, which means that it would be about a thousand or, a, you know, about 1100 milliliters or so. And so you can just kind of look on this thing and I got liters, so it'd be a liter um, so we're just going to mix up about one and a half just to make sure we have enough. And that's how I came up with that number. Um, but I knew how much the mold holded. Holded. <laughs> oh, man. Mold holded. I can't talk today. I knew how much the mold holds beforehand. All right. Now, if you need to figure out how much your mold holds, mold hold, that's funny. That's a weird saying. Um, then there's a couple ways to do that. You can either use a, like a calculator. There's a, a few different calculators online. Alumilite has one. And they'll kind of go through. You, you take, you know, length, width, height, and then you multiply by a factor. In, this, in, in Alumilite's case, the, the number that they use is 0.554. And then, uh, and then that'll give you how many ounces of resin you need. Um, the other way to do it is you could use like something like rice and fill in your mold and then dump it out and see how much volume, you know, in, in a cup. You'd, you'd want to use a, a graduated cup, see how much volume that took in rice. It's going to be about the same. I would recommend adding a little bit more just to make sure you don't want to short it, you know. But that's how you can do that. Now the part B is a little bit thinner, so that's nice. We're just sneaking up on that 48 ounce line. It's good to kind of pour it, let it settle, especially with this stuff. It takes a second for it to really kind of even out because it's a little thicker. And then drop down to the, to the level of that line. So let me, let me actually switch to the other camera or the, the dual double cam. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm trying to get down to the level of the line. If you're looking from up here, it looks like I'm already there. But if I actually get down, I can see there's, you know, it's, it's not far enough. I'm going to add a little bit more. You don't have to contort like I'm doing. Just add a little bit and drop down. 
<laughs> but if you're quick, if you're in a hurry, you can contort. All right, so we've got we've done a pretty good number on this stuff. These things were like th at least three quarters full. We've got a couple of a couple of ca castings made here. All right, so uh, let me get my big stick here. And you can see, I mean, it's just actually I should have pulled out the the paddle mixer. I don't want to do this. I I didn't, I didn't think about it. I don't even want to mess with that thing because we'd be here for three three years. If you're mixing a big bucket like this, definitely recommend getting one of these little paddle mixer things. So much easier. But I always recommend, and it's not a bad idea anytime you're working with resin. I just don't particularly love it. But if I'm using a paddle mixer, I'm pulling the, the, the eye protection out for sure. Let me just, let's just get rid of this stupid stick. Shouldn't have done that. So it's just like we're baking a cake or something. And you can find these paddle mixers, there's different kinds. Um, I just got these on Amazon. A cold mold holds the same as a warm mold. There's absolutely no difference. Yeah, I, I, I hear you about the eye protection thing, but I'm, I'll tell you what. I do this a lot, and <laughs> you just never know. Um, I've gotten resin in my eye before, and let me tell you, you really don't want that because it just burns, it hurts, and your eye swells. And in some cases, if you get enough of it in there, you're going to have to go to the eye doctor and it ain't going to be cool. So, you know, realistically, I mean, I should probably wear them if I, if I wanted to make absolute sure that I don't get ever get resin in my eyes um, when I'm casting all the time. And I think even Illumilite recommends it, but I'm just not a huge fan of wearing glasses all the time but when it's spinning around like that I mean you got a way higher chance of it flipping into your eye somehow oh we're <laughs> the battery died I was wondering what was going on it was like feels like feels like I'm not even pulling the trigger okay don't worry we got extra batteries oh there we go oh yeah And so what I'm trying to do is like get the paddles to, to scrape the sides of the bucket as much as possible, you know, especially in the bottom. I, I got it all the way down to the bottom of the bucket, especially with how thick this, this resin specifically is. Um, it'd be very easy for just some part A or part B to kind of be stuck on the walls, you know, like coating the, the edge. And so unless you scrape that off, it's not going to mix in. So we got, you know, 30 minutes or so or more of working time. So I definitely recommend if you got a resin like that, there's there's no reason to even chance the fact that you you didn't mix it enough. That's mixing and measuring. 
you know, so the, the measuring out of the two parts and mixing resin are the two biggest reasons that most people run into issues with resins. And I like to take a stick also and just kind of scrape the edge because you got a nice straight side, you know, you can just kind of make sure it's not just a paddle kind of flipping around on the edge. So it's good to do that and just kind of mix it around. Plus I had some, you know, kind of not very mixed resin on this stick. So I wanted to kind of dunk this back in here and get everything mixed. And this is just a piece of HDPE. You can buy, you know, like 330 seconds or eighth inch or whatever um, sheets of HDPE, cut it up and into whatever size you want. So, I mean, these things are great. I have all different sizes depending on what I'm doing. And I've actually found these things work the best. I, I tried these silicone, you know, I've had this for a while. I've tried other silicone spatulas. I frankly don't really like them. I haven't found them to be any better than these. These are super easy to clean and everything's good. So I'm gonna wipe this guy off. We're gonna do a little bit more paddling and then we will break it up into some different cups real quick and do our first pour. Again, we're gonna do two different, we're testing. We wanna see what does it look like if we just kind of you know mix it up and dump it. Now, granted, things would be a little bit different if I was just mixing up the 540 grams probably like you know i'm kind of messing around here cleaning off the stick if pouring it right away is is not exactly what we're doing it's, it's going to be a few minutes in basically but still i would consider this definitely the early stages now we have five five of them let's see here so let's do like 600 divided by five. 120 grams each so i'm actually gonna I wish they made, I wish I had some smaller reusable cups. Mm. Let's just get going here. We're going to do 120 grams each of these guys. It doesn't have to be perfect necessarily. I'm just going to mix one and then we're going to kind of shoot for about the same amount 120 grams of resin in each one of these guys oh we went over i'm going to pour this back i wouldn't really worry about it so much we, i've mixed up more resin than we really need for these pours i think so i'm not that worried about it but <clears throat> I want to kind of get an idea of what the, the actual, what it should be in this cup. That's pretty close, 123. Well, I guess I didn't really remix this, huh? Let me give it a couple more seconds with the gun. I think it's good already, but all right, now we're definitely good and I'll, I'll make sure to mix that cup up well. Nice thing about resins that have kind of a slow working time, it's not like you're in a rush, you know, at all. You got to kind of move a little bit with Illuminolite Clear, it's even the slow, but you also get results quicker. <laughs> you know. That's kind of the other difference I would say between something like Amazing Clearcast and, and Illumilite Clear Slow. So 
you would have to leave, you know, you got to leave these things in the pressure pot overnight with amazing clear cast. Um, with the Lumalite clear, I mean, I would, I would take out a brick like this in two hours. So pretty, pretty wildly different amount of time that, that you need to mess around with the pressure pot, you know. Um, not a huge deal. I mean, you know, the next day it's going to be nice and hard, but you do have to wait that whole time before you can do anything with it. That one's a little over. That one's definitely over. Okay, we got we plant we got plenty of resin, so that's that's fine. And I think we still have plenty of resin anyway. Um, what I think, let's see here. I'm just gonna leave that in the bucket for now. Um, each one of these guys, let's see here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a one of these cups. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I'm gonna zero. It is zeroed to a cup. I'm gonna just see how much resin we have, and then we're gonna add. Um, one percent or I, I mean let's see here one and a half percent according uh, if, like measured against the total amount of resin so 123 times 0 0.015 so um, is that right okay yeah so somewhere in the neighborhood of like two grams of resin to do so I'm going to zero that out uh, you always want to shake these guys up, the um, these, these like divine pigments, the anything that has like an op opacity to it. Uh, I got my mixing paddle on Amazon. They got lots of different ones you can choose from. Those red ones work pretty good. We got two grams there. Powder blue. I'm gonna go with a little bit of berry red. Zero that out again. Two grams or so. That one. Oh, for goodness sakes. Get out of my way dies one thing i find is these the divine pigments seem to be very messy messier than the lumalites dies okay so we got that done let's get this guy going zero it out I shake it i don't know if i shook it i think i shook it oh my goodness i lost the stupid nozzle I'll just use my finger because it went way under the <laughs> under the desk. Okay, good enough. Okay, we got two grams of that. Move that into that pile. Zero that out. We're gonna go with some aqua conch or conch aqua, whatever. Mix it up, two grams. So if you're gonna be playing with dyes and wanna get repeatable results with your dye colors, especially if you're like, you know, mixing them, you know, like custom colors and stuff, you're definitely gonna to wanna to get a, you'll, you'll need to get a scale and you're gonna to need to get one that's reasonably, like I would recommend getting one down that goes down to 0.1 grams. I can't really recommend this scale. Um, I can, it's really good, but it's also ridiculously expensive. I was having problems with the scales that I was getting. So as long as you're okay with using battery power, um, there's a lot of different scales out there that, that'll work fine. I don't like relying on that. I find that sometimes I get distracted, walk away, and the thing shuts off. <laughs> so I don't like battery powered ones. And there really are not that many options out there anymore for the plug-in ones that go down to an accurate, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 grams. And I've had really bad results with the, the ones that I usually recommend. So I don't know what to tell you guys at this point. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's looking good. 
That should be totally opaque right there. Uh, you might want to look, you know, especially if you're making something that's like a pen blank and you're going to, you know, by the time you're done turning it down, you drilled out the center and then turned it down, there's very little resin left. So to get an idea of whether it's going to be kind of see-through or not is, you know, just get some on your mixing stick and just see, can you see the, the, the wood grain? And if you can't, then you're probably fine. Like it's probably good. You're not going to need to, you know, paint the tubes and do all that kind of stuff. The brass tube won't necessarily show. If you can kind of see through it, then, you know, you, you, odds are you're probably going to want to have to paint, you know, either the inside of the blank or the, the tubes. That one definitely looks like it's pretty opaque. Okay. Ooh, look at that. It's the bubblegum pink, I think, right there. Oh, yeah. Should be fully transparent, I think, as well. Yeah, I, I like this, but I mean, it was like $300, I think. <laughs> like, I, I can't, I mean, unless you're going to do this. Like, I need this. Uh, the, what I like about it, why I have it, and I'm not like why I spent $300 or whatever it was on a scale. It's extremely fast, it's super accurate, and it goes down to 0.1. And it really, a lot of times you can say that it, you know, it's, it's accurate, it has, you know, it'll display 0.1, but most scales will not be accurate down to 0.1. If you put 0.1 amount on the scale, it really won't. This thing's pretty, pretty accurate enough to, to go down that far. So it has a lot of things. There's a reason why it costs so much, but I don't recommend this to anybody. Um, to be honest, these things actually work pretty darn well. These are like $10, all right? So it's battery powered. They have ones that either are, are go to like a, a gram, uh, 0.1, I think, as well as this one actually goes down to 0.01. Um, I use this to kind of double check things uh, sometimes, but... Those are like 10 or 12 bucks, they work fine. You know, I mean. And if you don't need to measure dies out to 0.1, or you're not, another reason why you would want something super accurate, you know, the 0.1 gram scales, is if you're, you're mixing up like really tiny, tiny amounts of resin, you need to have a lot more accuracy in your scale. It cannot be, you know, you couldn't range half a gram if you're only mixing up 10 or 20 grams, like it's gonna throw the ratio off. That's gonna be nice and opaque there. Um, if, if, if what you're doing is mixing up 500 grams or something, you know, or bowl blanks or, you know, big bricks of pen blanks and stuff, and that's it, then you, all you really need is a scale that goes to, you know, one gram, and you're gonna be fine, you know. Ooh, look at that. That's very red. These things are gonna be wild, guys. All right, so I got these guys mixed in. None of them look like they're gonna be transparent whatsoever, so that's cool. I don't like transparent. That's one of the reasons why I got into, when I started, I, I, I actually bought Alumilite white first, which is not, it's a really difficult resin to use. But I really didn't wanna to have to paint tubes ever, and that stuff turns totally opaque when it cures. So that's one of the advantages. All my team color blanks are made with that, so you never have to paint the tubes on those. All right, so we're gonna pour right away. Actually, let's pour this first one into our Jake's Blanks mold. It's a silicone mold. You can get these at northsidecustomcrafts.com. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually get this in the center. I usually do this when I'm doing production stuff. I have my mold kind of over there. Let's get this center right up and close. Let's zoom you guys in a little bit even. Why not? I got my cups kind of surrounding here. And so I'm just going to kind of go and do one of each color real quick. Little, little, little bits here. And there. These things look like paint. It's so cool. I 
That, that conch aqua really matches the, the mold color. And you can do all kinds of funky stuff. You can do swirls and pearls and straight lines and whatever you want. Tons of different pouring strategies, methods, or whatever. Use whichever one you like. I tend to just kind of do whatever, <laughs> you know. Go with some more of this berry red here. Do a big blob of that. So you can kind of just go at your own little pace here, pouring. Um, you know, if, if you're using a, a faster resin or when we get to the, you know, we, when we do the other pour with this stuff, I forgot to time it again, but we do have a temperature number. I should have timed it. I, I want to, I still want to time it. I'm going to have to go back and like look like at the last video, how long it took. Um, not that I would go by time, but I think temperature is a better method of figuring out that kind of Goldilocks pour window temperature thing. But um, I am very curious, you know, just to see how long it had been sitting there. Um, but, you know, when you're waiting till the end of the working time, um, you, you, you know, you kind of have a, a little bit, you have just a window of time that you, you can get these things poured in. So there's maybe a little bit more rush, I would say, but this time, you know, I'm not, I got all kinds of time. I'm not that worried about it. Oh, what's that? Huh. No clue what that is. <laughs> it's not good, whatever it is. <laughs> hmm. I have no clue where that came from. I had a chunk of something in there. And something in the cup, I think, because I don't think it was in the resin. Now, one of the nice things about these Jake Blank molds, he's got a little line that tells you when you've gotten to, I want to say it's to the, the inch mark, which is super handy. And I can see it right there, so we're still not there yet. We still got some pouring to do here. Should have plenty of resin. I'm not that worried about that. Should be quite a bit over, actually, I think. Look at how crazy those colors are. What do you guys think of that? Pretty cool little. Cool little looking thing here. Looking good. I'm very curious to see if this bleeds. I mean, you can see. I mean, it's, it's bleeding maybe a little bit here and there. You can see. But I, I was seriously blown away at how little bleed you got. Because... If we would have poured Illumilite clear slow right away, I mean, it would have just been a mess. Like, it would have been one color, probably. Stuff you definitely have to wait, because it's a thinner viscosity resin, so it's just going to kind of mix together. This stuff, pretty thick stuff. Just doesn't really want to mix together as much. I have kind of found that the divine pigments, um, as compared to, you know, if you were using just like the transparent ones, a lot of times the divine pigments really don't bleed that much. 
Not, not as much, at least. It just seems like, and I'm wondering, I have a theory. I don't know if it's true or not, if it's what the, what the deal is. Um, my theory is because the color particles are bigger in a pigment-based resin, they don't mix as easily. But in a dye, they're super, super fine. Okay, we're pretty much at the top there. So do a few more pours here. Colors, and then we'll be good. So I don't know if anybody knows anything about that or has any thoughts. Kind of the difference between dyes, technically like dyes and pigments. Pigments are bigger chunks of color, at least from what I understand, what I've heard from most, most sources that kind of know what they're talking about, I guess, <laughs> more than me. A little bit more red. And I think we're good. I'm gonna, well, let's, let's do like a, just a little tiny bit more. Okay. And I'm going to give this, I'm actually going to grab another stick because my hands are all weird. And I'm going to grab one of these small ones. We're just going to come in. We're going to give it an even test. We're going to give it, we're going to actually mix it up. So by stirring it, you're going to, you know, lend yourself to more bleeding. And I'm going to come right through. Look at that. And plus you can make some really cool patterns. We did this on the second one uh, last time and I just, it just looks so cool. I wanted to do it again. So we'll do, we'll try to do the same type of thing on both of these and just, you know, I'm not going to say that this is scientific in any manner, but we'll try to be as scientific as we can about it. So I'm going to put this on a, <clears throat> I'm not taking my gloves off, but they were like saturated in resin. So I'm going to put more gloves on because I don't really want to spill this all over my hands. Resin on skin, not what you want. All right, so let's just slide this guy right in here. I got a little, there's all kinds of different little things out there that you can use to as trays. Um, I really like, I, I, I just kind of, this was easier, but I really like these ones from P-Town Subby. They have different levels. So you can put a bunch of different ones on, but it's just as easy to make your own little rack. The thing about silicone molds, though, is you want to put them on something flat. If you just put them in the pressure pot, uh, the, the base of the pressure pot is like kind of dished. And when you pressurize the silicone mold or, you know, pressurize your pressure pot with the silicone mold in there and the resin, you're going to end up with this with blanks that are like banana shaped, like, you know, rounded on the bottom. And I, it took me a long time to figure out what the heck was going on. I'd, I'd put some blanks in a pressure pot and they'd come out and they'd be all like warped. And I was like, what the heck is going on with these stupid things? You know, I don't, I, I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And then I realized that the pressure was actually, you know, causing the, the mold to, to kind of match the bottom of the pressure pot and then uh, part of the thing is the ca technologies pots like a harbor freight pot is like dished like and, and many of them are really really dished the ca technologies ones that i use aren't really that dished they're pretty flat and so i just it, it took me forever then i finally figured out you know either put it on a rack or um, just put a piece of um, you know like a circle disc of wood or they actually make um, and I think Turner's Warehouse sells these. Oh, I just stuck that right in the resin. This is why I don't like dripping all over the place because then I do this. And then when you, when that cures, you try and stick that in the pressure pot. See all these little drips? Then your, your rack isn't sitting flush or level. It just, it, it all goes downhill, guys. <laughs> But I think Turner's Warehouse sells these. The problem is I don't have a Harbor Freight pressure pot, so these are kind of 
I don't really care so much about them, but you can just get, get a disc. This will fit in a Harbor Freight perfectly. Or any of those ones that are about, I think they're about nine inches, the nine inch pressure pots. CA Technologies are a little bigger. They're about a, an inch wider diameter. Um, it's just, that's actually kind of another reason why I like them. I don't think I showed you guys. Get that out again. This is just a piece. It's just a piece of HDPE. I mean, you you could go buy yourself a piece of HDPE, like half inch or three quarter thick. Do the same thing. Cut it into a circle. But if you really wanted to, I think Turner's Warehouse has those. All right, so let me stop real quick. Yaks here. What's up, man? Woohoo! Yeah, it was a good good choice of colors by the the chat. Hey, Jen's here. What's up? Yeah, I've, I've been doing Wednesdays for a long time. Let's see here. Yeah, I like the Jake Blinks. They're really good. Um, one of the, I just bought, I'm, I'm super stoked. Like, all of them are good, but this one in particular. Um, has helped tremendously because I've been making um, zoom out. I've been making stopper blanks for for Carl Jacobson for for Niles bottle stoppers. I don't make that many stopper blanks necessarily, but they they ordered some. And this thing, I saw Jake using this, and I was like, dude, I need that. I mean, it is just perfect. Now you're gonna have to use a five gallon pressure pot with this. It, it doesn't fit in a, a, a two and a half gallon. Um, so like Harbor Freight is out, but you know, I mean, realistically at this point, I mean, the, the pressure pot that I recommend most people buy is the, this California Air Tools five gallon anyway. It's just the best bang for the buck. I'm really wishing somebody would come out with a, a decent, ready to go out of the box, two and a half gallon pot for like cheaper. Um, and Casey and I were actually just kind of talking about this. It's just ridiculous that, that nobody else, I mean, Harbor Freight pots just suck. They're, they're just not good quality. Um, they're fine. I mean, they'll, they'll get you by if that's, you know, whatever. But, I mean, I won't use them anymore. I can't stand them. Um, I have better ones. But these are super expensive, right? And so could you just come out with something that's smaller and a little bit more price, you know, for everybody? Anyway. Oh, your schedule keeps changing. Well, I, that's no fun. <laughs> Kim's like, not on camera. All right, so now it's kind of a waiting game. We're gonna play, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna do the double cam thing, just so I don't forget again. Um, what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna check the temp first. And, uh, and I like to kind of uh, sort of stir it up a little bit. I'm just gonna use the, this thing since it's already kind of resiny. And on, so we're only at 87 and a half degrees right now. Um, last time we waited until it reached, um, uh, about 125 is when we poured. And I, I think honestly, I think, I think 120, I know I should have my glasses on. Uh, I think 120 is maybe the sweet spot, possibly. I, I don't know. You can maybe even wait longer. It seemed like it was starting to kind of thicken up a, a, a good amount last time at 120, I don't know, about halfway through, like, pouring. So I was thinking maybe we could try a little bit earlier, but I don't know. Let's just do the exact same thing, because I'm also trying to kind of compare the results with dye to the results that we got with the micas. So if anybody didn't see, if you're kind of just joining the fun here, dang it, I got resin all over these things. <laughs> these were the ones that we poured the second batch. So, so this was, you know, we waited until that 125 Fahrenheit to pour them. And you can see that there's, there's very good separation. You know, there's really no bleeding going on in these things. Um, I don't know that the swirl pattern is the most amazing. I probably could have done a little better. I poured, I think I poured a little thicker 
uh, on these ones because I was kind of going a little faster. That's why I was talking about maybe starting at 120. But um, these were the ones that we poured at the beginning. So it was about the same time frame as what we did today. And I got to be honest, like I really lo love the look of these. But they do have some bleeding going on just a little bit, right? So I'm very curious to see how do how does this all compare, basically? Um, how is it going to look? I gotta wipe these things off. I don't know what I got on these things. Oh, something sticky all over them. I just want to see how how does the dye work compared to the mica powders? You know, are are we gonna get the same exact results? Is it, um, it typically in my experience, dyes are a little bit more bleedy. <laughs> Let's say they tend to bleed a little bit more. Now we got to wait though till that 125. So I'm just going to clean these up real quick and then we will maybe we'll think of a subject to talk about. Anybody got any questions? This would be the time because I'm going to be just kind of standing here. Stop and look. Frank's out of here. Uh, have fun. Say hi to your friends for us. Okay, those things are clean again. Let's see here. Horrible freight. Harbor Freight's got some good stuff, but... And, and I will say, you know, so I'm, I'm sitting here complaining that there's not, you know, cheaper alternatives for pressure pots. It don't get much cheaper than 80 bucks, or I guess I, I heard that they might have got rid of the 20% the coupon things, but um, you know, like 100 bucks, let's say. 100 bucks, you get a pressure pot, you can get up and running, and it's not like it's the worst thing ever, you know, it's gonna kill you. It's fine, but I really don't like those screws. You really gotta, you know, put a little bit of time into, you know, messing with it to get everything. Um, to get it, you know, sealed. They're harder to seal a lot of times. You got to mess around with stuff. Um, and those clamps, the screw, the wing nut things are so small and they just kill your fingers, your hands when you're trying to tighten them. So there's a lot of drawbacks, right? It's not awesome, but I mean, for a hundred bucks, it's, you know, it'll get you there. I just wish somebody would come out with something. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think what the price ranges are now for, uh, for all the different pots, but like the California Air Tools five gallon, isn't that like two fifty? I don't know how much that. I actually want to get one of those. I really, really want to get one because I haven't actually used one. So Turner's Warehouse has them. How much are these? Two eighty nine for the five gallon. You know, so you're looking at like almost three three hundred bucks for a five gallon pressure pot. They do now, like TCP Global and maybe even California Air Tools, they do sell a two and a half gallon pot, but the amount of messing around that you have to do to con convert them, they have like an agitator thing. They're, they're made for paint and it has a thing, like a shaft that goes through the middle of the tank of the lid that has a propeller thing on it so you can like stir up paint in this paint because they're technically like a paint pot. That's what these things actually are. And so you got to take that out, plug it somehow and do all this junk. And it's like, you know, whereas the California Air Tools five gallon, it's ready to go out of the box. Like it literally has the ball valve and everything. So it's just tough. I wish that, you know, California Air Tools or TCP Global would come out with a two and a half gallon casting made pot that's like ready to go out of the box. And I'm, I'm wondering what they would actually cost, like, like 200 bucks, maybe twice as much as the Harbor Freight. I don't know. Let's, let's look on Amazon real quick. See what the TCP Global, if they have them there. There it is, two and a half, 269, really? Seems ridiculous, no, it's got stuff. 
Okay, I don't know. These, these numbers are not right, I don't think. Used to, I don't know how much they cost. I can't find it real quick, but somewhere in there. Oh, we got, we got super chats from Dave and from Dave. <laughs> Thank you guys. I appreciate it. I'll tell you what, I actually, I got something that I'm very happy with. So when I was setting up my, my Cyclone um, dust collector, the um, Oneida, the problem was somehow you need to put, you need to put the motor on the Cyclone thing, the cone on top of it. And then you got to pick all that stuff up and stick it on a, on a, a rack that is taller than a 55 gallon drum. And I'm alone. And I was like, great. So I went to Harbor Freight and they have like a hoist chain thing, like, like basically like a, a, I don't know. It's not, not really, it's kind of like a winch, but you know, it's, it's a hoist chain that you would mount somewhere above something. And it was perfect. It's what I needed. And so we mounted it in the rafters. I will say that was hard actually to get that thing mounted above there, but I was very happy with that. It helped. Air tools, Home Depot, grade nine. Yeah. Yeah, Jen, you know, I used to look at those numbers for those types of molds as well. Oh, you know what I, I need to do? Let's get these in, into smaller cups while we're kind of talking here. Make sure I don't have a, any recommendation for heated casting. I'm actually going to be uh, coming up with an idea for that and doing a video on it soon. I got something on the way that I think will help people possibly. So I don't really offhand, I mean, the, so... Just to let you guys know, what I'm going to be doing is um, a reptile tank pad. I think that might actually work pretty well. So I'm going to put 120 or whatever grams in here. Oh, I went a little bit over. A little bit over. Okay. I really love using these gigantic buckets. And things like pen blanks. But what we got. Okay, that's close enough. Now we can do all the rest over here. So we can get these things like roll in here, and I don't have to mess around with this giant bucket thing. Give me one second. We're getting there. Actually, I think the numbers might have worked out about right. I was over. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to get that thing out of the way because I think all these things are good. Let me just double check. I'm going to zero out a cup. We're at zero. Make sure everything's somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh, that actually was warm. Stuff heating up already? Let's check the temp. I've been yakking on for a little bit here. Not to be used for food, no. Let's see what the temperature is here. 99, 96, 93, 90. That's funny that they're all different. Um, that was only 113. Let's see if I can kind of even things out here a little bit. That's 146. That one was just pretty low. I don't really care about that one. Okay, we're at 120 now. 140 something so we got plenty of resin here plenty of resin um so let's put on our dies too while i'm thinking about it let's see here Under chain i'm not sure what that means Three forty. yeah you can get it i would recommend i mean you can save a couple bucks a couple places but i would recommend uh 
support Turner's warehouse. They got them there. And the beauty of it is Chad will, you know, you got, if you order something on Amazon or from Home Depot or whatever, like there's nobody to talk to if, if, if you can't figure out how to get things going or if you have issues. With Turner's Warehouse, you got Chad. He'll, he'll fix it, you know, he'll help you out. I um, mean, he knows what he's doing with those things. So I would, that's why I would kind of recommend going with that. Just my recommendation. If you use my link, I get a kickback too, but that's not really the reason why. It just, it's much better, you know, supporting a small business, you know, in the community, but having some, a little bit of support is just so nice. Okay, so let's see here. What am I doing? We need, I put all the dies away, didn't I? We need these, I think it was all these ones. Yep. Okay, we're good. We're gonna load up again to about two grams, maybe a little bit more in some of these things. I don't know. Yeah, three, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I think we got them. So again, I'm gonna shake these guys up. I'm mathing, I know. <laughs> what math? Not good when I math. What am I doing? Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Two grams. So we got again berry red. So if all you're doing is putting one color in, it doesn't matter that much if it's dead accurate or not. But if you're trying to mix colors, if you're, you know, going for a, a custom color, then you're going to have to be dead on accurate. Okay. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows, like, I may not be exactly at two grams or whatever, you know, or especially with mica powders, like no matter how much you put in there, it's really not going to look much different. Um, there's, you need to get to a minimum amount, but beside, uh, beyond that, it doesn't matter if you have two grams or 10 grams, but there is a limit. You can only put two and a half percent, you know, in there. So you got to keep that in mind, but um, these things are not going to change if I put more in. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. If, if you can see the, the numbers here, not being dead on accurate necessarily. Not going to change anything. Okay. And especially, I got a lot more resin in some of these things, so I'm kind of leaning towards going over anyway. We got our Conk Aqua. This is a really good color that you came out with. That one was, that one seemed pretty, like a lot, a lot of resin in that one. More. Okay. okay, and then zero. Shake, shake, shake. Baco Ing. Never even heard of that. That's cool. How do you pronounce that? Bacoing? And we got resin on my scale, my brand new $300 scale. Oh no, we're not doing that. Get that cleaned up right away. Oh yeah. Look at that. Okay, so let's pop some pop popsicle sticks. Boom, 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 boom. And boom. These guys mixed up and then we'll check the temp. I think we're getting pretty close actually to when we should pour. Forty emails. Ugh. Feels like it's getting pretty warm pretty quick here. One twelve. So I think I better quit yapping and start mixing these things in so that we can uh, pour them at 125 or so. So one thing that I noticed last time, um, and I was kind of paying a little bit more attention in the middle, it seemed like, and I'd never seen this before because it doesn't happen with Alumilite Clear with the faster setting resins. Um, 
I found that this stuff starts out really thick, you know, like room temperature. And then in the middle, when it starts to kind of warm up a little bit, it actually thins out, which is what you would actually kind of expect. That's how liquids work, um, t you know, typically, but it, it, it's also undergoing a chemical reaction. So that kind of changes things also. But uh, And then it thickens back up when you kind of get to the, you know, that 120 mark. So it was kind of a weird thing. Uh, just I, I, I'd never seen that kind of thing before. And I think you could maybe get into a little bit of trouble with this stuff if you poured it when it thinned out. If you were like, so it's almost like there's a couple of windows where I don't know that you'd really want to pour it if it thinned a bit. <laughs> and I don't know what temperature that was or whatever, but, you know, who knows? So let's see, where are we at here? 115. And you can tell this this stuff is definitely definitely getting a little thick. It was 106. I don't really trust that. Huh. Okay. Feels warmer than that to me. 117. So I think the bottoms of these cups are a little bit. Get the bottom part up to the top, kind of. Yeah, 116. So I think that is a good indication of where we're at temperature wise we're pretty close so let's get things rolling here let's zoom you guys in just a little bit a bit less let me just mix all these guys up a little bit here 117 again get this on uh honk -wa -conk. Conk Aqua mixing. This one doesn't feel as warm. That's so weird. Huh. I don't know what's going on. That one's like 102. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, maybe it was like top of the bucket or something. I don't know. Once this pink one hits like 125 or so maybe the red one i don't know 109 this one feels the warmest it's kind of weird that they're like different that's 119 right there One twenty. so we'll just wait just a little bit longer and then start pouring we'll, we'll try and i'll try and hold myself until 125. Oh, I don't want to though. I want to, I want to do very similar. So we're going to pour now. It's 120. I think it's not going to make much difference. And I think it actually in the end is going to be about the same as if I would have started at 125 because I want to do more thinner. That was one of the differences that, that the last test, I really didn't do all the way through the mold. I was starting to get a little worried about it setting up and thickening. So I, I started pouring kind of thicker amounts and less. And so I'd, I'd like to try to kind of, you know, not, not do as... And that one felt kind of thin. I think I already did pink. Get some red. Oh, I already did red. Let's do some purple. That's weird. This one's thick or, or like thickening and warm. And some, oh God, some of these things are not as, not as warm. It's weird. The only thing I can think of to account for that is that in the bucket that the, 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 you know, the big one that we poured this from, some of these were kind of like the top of the bucket where that's what happens is the resin's a little bit thinner, or I mean, a little bit cooler at the top and kind of down in the middle, in the bottom, the resin is usually a little bit warmer. That's why I like to mix them up before I take a temperature. So I don't know what that does to our experiments. I think I poured out Last time, I think I poured the all the cups out much earlier. I didn't leave it 
in the big bucket. So, whoa. Oh, God. Lost concentration. All right, we're just rolling along here. my head on the camera. <laughs> Starting to kind of get thick in these cups here. Pretty thick. That's one of the things, you know, people say, oh, I got 30 minutes of working time. But the truth is, if you're waiting till the end of the working time, you only have so much time, you know, no matter how, <laughs> if it's a fast or slower setting resin. So just kind of keep that in mind. But typically with your slower setting resins, you're going to have longer gel period, kind of, where it's kind of in that gel state. Uh, like with Lumilite Clear Slow, you only have so many, you know, I, I usually don't start pouring until 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And you don't have that many minutes, you know, I mean, by then it's already at least like eight or nine minutes in most likely. And it's only got about a 12 minute working time. Now that can all vary depending on temperatures and all these things, but just kind of use that as a reference as, you know, understand that you only have so much time before this stuff kind of really locks into place. Uh, but you're, you're typically going to have a, a little bit less time with a faster setting resin. You can also kind of get away with a little bit more sometimes. All right, this thing's looking pretty good. We got some more resin to go. Might pour a little bit thicker here at the end just so we can kind of get to the end. I don't think it's going to set up on me. It does feel like it's getting really thick, but I don't... I don't really think it's actually going to set up. Hope not. Um, and this is the thing, you know, that when you're just getting, I just did that. When you're just getting started with resin casting or, you know, if you're making blanks and stuff like that, depending on whatever technique you're trying to do, I mean, you kind of need to work with the resin for a little while to understand and it's not a big deal if you if you get a failure or something if it sets up on you then you know okay well i, I gotta watch out you know i only have this long um oh, see it's getting really sticky <laughs> it's got, it's got resin all over the place um but it's good to kind of have those failures here and there and and really try to experiment with your resin to, to understand you know how much time do i have like it's not a bad deal to really push the limits and, and, you know, waste a batch possibly to, to understand how much time do I really have? When is this going to set up? That's, that's well worth a batch of pen blanks, you know, <laughs> knowing that. Then from there on, you'll know. And you won't have to worry about that anymore.
Yeah, this is getting pretty, pretty thick. Okay. I'm going to do a little bit more blue, but it's starting to, I'm starting to kind of get a little bit worried. This stuff is getting really thick. All right, so we're going to call it quits. We're going to grab another little popsicle stick if I can get one without making a big mess. This stuff is thick. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, get off my finger. Ah. Okay, I don't have to worry about this one. Let's see if I can take it like a quick temp. 109 is what the top says. It's obviously not what it is, but that stuff, that stuff was getting pretty, pretty darn thick, guys. So it's kind of tough, you know. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that you have, I don't know. I don't know that you have a whole lot more time in that gel state than with the Lumilite Clear Slow. I don't know how long I was going and all that, but, and I kind of wasted some of this resin, but I was, I'd rather see the results than worry about this resin, basically. Oh man, there's, there's resin everywhere. That. Uh, whew. Messy business, guys. So <laughs> let's see here. I'm going to go to that one. What are we doing? Is this just for cutting boards? I got to be honest. So I was, I was starting to talk about those, those, those molds and you know, like the big cutting board ones that are like HDPE or either, either that or silicone. I mean, really they are pretty expensive, but they're reusable, right? And, and they're made for you. You don't have to mess around. And so, you know, if I'm, I don't know how much these cost me, but between my time, and how much the HDPE costs, you know, people sell those molds probably for like 60 bucks and it's well worth it. Like I would easily pay that if somebody was making them to the exact same specs that I was making mine, you know, if I could get those. Um, so, and I, I've kind of been really thinking about, you know, maybe branching out and getting some of those bigger molds. Um, there's, you know, like HDPE that, that, that things just pop out of. And I don't know, I mean, the big thing is if you're going to make a lot of them, if this is like a production thing, then the cost of that mold doesn't, it's not even, it's inconsequential basically like whatever, just do it. Um, if you're going to make one, then no way would I buy a 150 or $200 mold. You know, it just, what, what's the point? So yeah, melamine's a good way to go. Um, you could cut up a bookcase, but there are different, just make sure that you cover it with the the tuck tape or the you know um, what is that other stuff called tyvek um, because i've seen melamine is a term that doesn't describe much um, there's lots of different coatings so basically melamine is particle board and then there's a coating of some plastic film stuff on it and that can vary widely and I've seen a lot of those shelves have like, it's almost like paper, basically. It's not really a very good mold. Like I have some, some melamine that's, it's like a pretty thick piece. So make sure that you cover that thing with Tyvek tape. Um, so it's non-stick and you don't have to worry about that. And you should be good. Um, but that's by far the cheapest way to go um, for, you know, whatever you're trying to make. Silicone is going to cost a lot too. I mean, that's probably going to be 200 bucks in silicone too. So I would, I would go with melamine. It's, it's, it's the easiest for a one-off, like I said. Oh, well, yeah, I'd still, I think I would just make a melamine one if that's the case. If, because like you're, you're not making lots, you're, this isn't a for sure decision. I would go with the melamine route spend the time to make one that's cheap and then 
if they sell, then go buy a mold and just have it, you know, easy. And at that point, you might even really consider silicone um, because it's going to be so much easier, you know. I just think that if you have like the, the HDPE that's cocked and, and, and you know, um, like sealed, like there's no way to take it apart. It looks real great that they're just tapping it out and everything's all wonderful, but over time that mold is going to degrade and eventually that stuff's probably not going to come out too easy. So with silicone, yes, same thing's going to happen, but man, they're so much easier to demold. So you might think about that. Just my two cents. You don't have to believe me or <laughs> trust me on it, but that's what I would do. Anyway, guys, so I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I hope that I'm excited to see the results. I, I really thought part of the reason that I did this experiment with these, you know, the green, and I'll tell you what, here's, here's another thing. So there's a total side note. This color combination of mica powders is killer. I'm totally going to add some of these to my site, I think. Um, so for anybody that, if you, if you didn't see last, last week, so we got, um, and there's lots of different ones that are very similar, but dark ocean blue from, um, eye candy and then apple green from Perlex is the colors that we use for these. And they are fabulous. They are just awesome. I love them. So, um, but what I wanted to do was show the difference between, you know, what happens when you pour right away, which should suck. And then what happens when you pour at the right time, you know, like waiting till the end of the working time and, and they both turned out really good. And I was like, well, okay, that's not the greatest example, but I was very excited also. Uh, and then it, it got me thinking like, okay, we did it with micas. Let's see what happens with dyes. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to see what the results are of these. I don't know, just looking at how this worked, it looked very similar to how things went last time. So I'm actually gonna say, I think that the dyes are gonna work fine, or pretty good at least, bare minimum. So we'll have to see if I called it or not. We'll, we'll have to see what the results are. I will, uh, I'll put a short video up when I demold these uh, this weekend, and then um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see for next week. Um, I'll show you the results uh, on, on the next stream. It should be pretty fun. So uh, don't forget guys, we're gonna be doing the, the virtual Maker Fair uh, or virtual craft festival um, on uh, Saturday, this Saturday. I'm gonna be doing a, a, a demonstration, or it's, a, it's basically just a bunch of live streams, but um, a bunch of different YouTubers, um, and it's going like for like 24 hours, pretty much. Um, I'm going to be at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, I'll be on live on, on my channel. And then we're going to make some, we're going to cast some uh, flowers, some dried flowers. So I'm just going to, I'm going to tease you. I'm going to taunt you guys one more time because these are pretty fun. Um, I've already done these. Very fun to make. Um, and I've gotten pretty good results. So I'm just going to tease you a little bit here. Put it on the overhead cam. It'd be pretty fun. I was I was racking my brain on what to do for the for the craft festival. So these are rose petal and buds. These are just random. I think these are chrysanthemums, but they're all dried. These are moss balls, and I I was really curious to see what the heck was on the inside, and they're just solid moss. <laughs> so I got cut one in in, in half. Um, I'm thinking these will probably be like a stopper size thing. And then we have these little buttons that are like dyed and, and dried out. And so we're going to be doing those on Saturday. Um, and again, I'm at 4 p.m. I don't know who all, what, what the schedule is, who all's doing it yet, but I will be posting on Instagram, Facebook, um, possibly even a short, maybe mention it on, on shorts on YouTube. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, but be looking on, on all the social medias for, for when it goes up. And I, as soon as I kind of know and get, get other stuff, like know what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to set up, pause, talking too much today. <clears throat> anyway, as soon as I know what's going on, got everything ready, then I'll set up my stream. So you'll know when I go live and you should get notified. So if you haven't yet subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, that way you get notified when I go live or when new videos get posted. So I know it looked like broccoli. <laughs> That's true. Chinese takeout. That's funny. Oh man. So yeah, let's see. I was just going to look here, make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. So uh, anyway, so we got that coming up and again, big thank you to Brian. Here it is. I was like, where did I put it? 
Big thank you to Brian for making this for me. He made this for me. How, that is so cool. I mean, I'm just, I'm blown away. Just amazing. Thank you so much, Brian. I'll get that hung up. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking, I don't like it just sitting there. You can't really see it. I think maybe if we get it over here, I might try that magnets on the inside trick. See if we can get that thing going. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing the, the fun tonight. A little, just a little experimentation, uh, but it'll be, I think, useful. Uh, and, I, and hopefully it's, it's helpful to you guys. You know, not, not useful to me necessarily specifically, but to everybody. Um, just kind of seeing what do we get? What kind of results do we get with this resin doing a couple different things? I think that trying different things helps everybody out. That way you kind of know am I going to be screwed if I don't do this right? Or is it going to be okay? Or, you know, whatever. So hopefully it'll be helpful for you guys. But anyway, I will see you guys Saturday, hopefully at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Well, like I said, for the virtual craft festival. And if not, then, then I will see you guys next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And it'll be fun. So, and the other thing is I'm, I'm doing 3D printing. So if you haven't seen that video, I finally put an actual video up. It's been months and I apologize for the lack of actual real normal videos. Um, but we got 3D printing going on, so I am working on that. There's going to be more videos coming soon. Um, I got it up. Now it's kind of like I just got to play around with it and test a few things out. Then we'll start uh, getting some more videos going on that stuff too, so be looking for that. So all kinds of stuff. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Thanks again. Thanks, Big thank you to everybody that super chatted. I appreciate all the awesome support, great color choices. And uh, thank you all for joining the fun tonight on the stream. And I will see you guys all next week on the next stream or Saturday, hopefully, uh, at the Virtual Craft Festival. So have a good night, guys. Thanks for joining the fun.